There's no way that you two pops wow. for Blind Guardian. Dude, no and way. actually, that you know, that's the first time we've played a lead-in, and it stopped beautifully. Right when we wanted it? Yeah. yeah. Dude, we should just stop right now. That's it. All Let's right, get LJ in here and get the fuck out of here. We'll call it a day. We're already behind, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah, running uh, like an hour and a half later than we're accustomed because uh, apparently Microsoft doesn't want us doing our podcast anymore. You see what so, happens uh, when you stop drinking? <laughs> there's that. A little, uh, little heads up here is that uh, old, Kev's, uh, old Kev's a little fuckered up. But um, Kev's on the wagon. <laughs> old Kev's fuckered up on life. <laughs> yeah, there's that. You know you hear those commercials on TV about getting high on life? Kevin's chock full of it now. That's right. No drinking for me for uh, at least about another week. I think about a week from today, I'll do that again. Because I'm back on the uh, the the, uh, the soccer uh, mom diet, whatever. The uh, keloid diet, I think. Uh, the, the, the the catharsis the diet. Catharsis. <laughs> that sounds actually like a kick-ass that diet. That would be actually all right. No, no, it's that fucking one. The, the limiting carbs, all this shit. Because I destroy myself for about six months, and the penance I do is like five weeks of this shit. We're eerily similar. Especially, you know, the... Uh, of course, last weekend was a was a weekend, and uh, <laughs> we uh, I wasn't keeping score. But amongst the three of us, me, you, and Brett, we went through over a hundred beers, probably neighborhood of about a hundred eight. And they weren't the small ones either. No, these are all tall boys. There were no small. There were no peasant beers in the batch. Uh, over a hundred of those, a bottle of whiskey at a minimum, a couple bottles of mead. Basically, by the time it was all said and done. Fuck, I, mean, I feel like I'm missing out some other shit. All that was missing was like a loaf of bread and a leg of meat. It, it, it was it was a uh, it was a weekend for sure. It was. It was a, it was hope, a real uh, it was a real hope, scene. <laughs> I hope everybody felt like their uh, their birthdays were celebrated properly. Wow, that's uh, yeah. I'm good. I'm good to go for another another year thereabouts. Yeah, and got to pretty much see everyone we give a fuck about. It was actually pretty badass. It felt like a mini, you know, because I put on a, a like a wine and cheese event around the holidays uh, when we're not in the weird pandemic era. I, I legit think Saturday we had as many or more people here than we did on a wine and cheese social a couple of years ago. I agree. Remember when uh, Ruben showed up and brought a lady and and, uh, and her boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. Bro, listen, bro. Uh I'm going to bring a girl. Is that cool? <laughs> Fuck yeah, that's cool, dude. Bring bring two. Uh, that dude. Uh, you got to fucking love Ruben. That's I all do. there is to it. I do, because like, <laughs> he technically didn't lie to us. No. He brought a girl. He, he just happened to bring that girl's boyfriend as well. <laughs> that's what but, I love uh, about him. That was, a, that was a very low attended year, because, and I, I'm not sure why. It, it, it was something just happened where the stars aligned where everybody else had other shit going yeah, that, that it Saturday. It was either like super early or super late in December. Yeah. I can't recall which. I don't know. But, but, but the turnout had, was about eight people. I but think. we had like as many, I think, last Saturday. Sure. Up in this piece, as the kids say. Up in this beer. And uh, yeah, I think it's around eight, eight or nine. So it was, a, it was a hell of a turnout for considering we're still technically in the pandemic. I'm allowed by the governor to have 10 people up in this uh, this piece. So <laughs> Up in this mosque. I'm uh, Yeah. I'm going to have to send an email to the governor. Hey, I'd like to get 10 people up in my joint. Is that cool? Is that legit with the realm? Well, because we are. We're still a little more uh, lockered down than others. If I could add a bunch of counties, like get reverted back this week, like nine of them. Wow. Slip back into the yellow zone. Any uh, big ones? Was like Roswell on it? No. Well, I'm kind of shocked. I figured Roswell would be the one of the first to get bumped back down. Lincoln, Otero. Fuck, there were a bunch of them. And then Colfax County got moved to the red. Oh, Bobby Wheeler territory. That's what he claims, right? <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it's uh, up there in northern New Mexico where, like, very few people live. So they're doing it all on this percentage basis thing. One cocksucker gets it. You're going to go. You're going to get moved down. Yeah, but what is there to do up there anyway? They actually have an all right bar up there. It's called Cold Beer, but it's actually it's called the uh, the Colfax Tavern, I think. But but it has this huge cold beer on the roof. You can see from miles away. No shit. Yeah, and I, I've only ever been in there in the daylight hours. They actually have a re- reasonably good green chili cheeseburger. Oh, it's one of those joints that also does food. Yeah, yeah. You pull like- up, pull up, saddle up at the counter, and you know throw down a couple beers and a green chili cheeseburger, and go uh, go uh, go back to the campsite. 
Oh, this is one of your camping gigs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is a little further out because the other one, I like it because there's a bar right up and over the top of the mountain and uh, go down yeah, over the mountain, past the lake. Sounds like some fucking going to see grandma song. That's yeah, right. We're going to get drunk. But uh, but it's a uh, it's a it's a bar that's in Eagle Nest. And I, you know, I've always enjoyed camping, but it turns out that I really enjoy camping if there's a bar nearby. <laughs> Makes me a little less outdoorsy. I'll give you that, but uh, yeah, but everything else though, it's not like you're bringing a goddamn generator with you. No, so no, it's, it's to it's motor all, out and go get uh, go get a little liquored up. There it ain't is no all, wrong with that. It is all tent camping at that point on. Yeah. Damn, I get claustrophobic. In a bar? No, in a tent. Well, <laughs> is it like a big tent? Can I have my own tent? Well, that's a one that we'd have to go out and get you one because uh, you, you ain't staying in mine. Mine's a little small for two dudes, unless they're uh, unless they're you know unless uh, that dude's a lady. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the, if it's a lady man, you know, well, you do you, man, you do you. The chat begins. It is a Mead Metal and MMA podcast. Get together once a week, talk about all the fun issues of the day going on with Mead, with Metal, with MMA. Sometimes, sometimes we just bitch about our personal lives or uh, or, or or talk about how great they are. Yeah. You you had a great past week because, as everybody listens to the show knows, that you uh, when you left the hotelier business, you became a, uh, a, a bud tender. I did. And uh, at a dispensary. And you got to, uh, for your first time ever, work on a 420. <laughs> Man. Now, I'm not asking you for any HIPAA violations. Oh, but, no, no, no. But the, it's every, got, it had to have been a goddamn madhouse. Well, shocker. It was a little busy. A little busy. Um... Well, that bitch was bumping on a Friday today, so I could only imagine Tuesday. Yeah, today was recertification day. Ah, uh, okay. Which, you know, a lot of these people coming in today we might not see in a year because Rec will be, at the bare minimum, about to fucking commence. I look into the timeline of that today. So if you're already a card carrier, you can start putting plants in the ground on June 29th. I don't exactly know what the number is. No, it's even if you're not. Oh, really? Even Just if anybody. you're not, anybody can. Starting you in June. shitting me? That's yeah. That's fucking crazy. Um, wow, and it's not even legal. So you can grow it. You just can't do anything with it. Uh, well, because, I mean, right now, <laughs> as of, uh, I think, June is when it's, like, de- like, fully decriminalized. Yeah. Because they're taking longer because they want to check out, like, that aspect of it. Like, getting this shit expunged from people's records. Which the logistics of that, I'm sure, is far more out there than getting the dispensary shit on the road because they've been talking about this for years. I'm sure they already got a framework for it. Yeah, I think we're well past the era of throwing people in a cage for fucking cultivating a plant. Yeah, I'd hope so. I mean, we're not fucking monsters anymore, are we? I don't know. Well, we got a guy in the White House that's not in favor of uh, uh, decriminalizing federally, so it's going to have to be up to those assholes that all lie and cheat and rob from each other. Well, that's good. We well, got they that robbed from us. us, actually, not from each other. <coughs> In other words, the, uh, the the Congress. So right, the Cong the Congress, sexual Congress. But uh, yeah, so the time like June twenty first on or 29th on that, uh, and then a bunch of like for like commercial growers, some of their shit really starts kicking in about October. And then uh, January, then that's when their stuff is finalized. So then that way there's enough on hand. So April 1 comes around in 2022, then they'll roll out uh, recreational then, and they'll have enough on hand, allegedly, to keep those uh, of us that depend on it med- you know, medicinally yeah. and keep it there on the shelves where it belongs. <laughs> so basically, and then I will get to my day. All right. But, but this is kind of a big thing. I, I, think, I really think this is a great thing. That legalization is finally here. And uh, let's see, starting June 29th, 2021, that's when it becomes legal to have it if you're over 21. If you have it in your pocket, no, you're, you're, you're legit. So you just can't buy it then. But if you have like a PVP bag in your pocket, that's like having a prescription in your pocket. Yeah. That, then you're fuckeroony. You yeah. better have that shit in, a, in something else. Right. But after that, and uh, let's see, you can uh, cultivate six mature plants and six immature plants with a limit of 12 mature plants per residence. Yeah. God damn, that's a lot of... That's a lot of... Especially if you're good at it. That's a lot of cannabis. If you're good at it, you can... Because they're not limiting, like, how much you can get. They're limiting the plant 
Right. Or, which, that, I mean, shit. If you, if, if you were actually one of these assholes that really, really knows what they're doing, you might be able to pull an ounce and a half off of a, a plant. Yeah. So, and here's the uh, the big tax thing, because everybody always wants, like, what tax going to be? So when it starts April 1st, April Fool's 2022, wouldn't that be fun to get up there? Psych! Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, bitch. <laughs> we done. Consult the calendar a little more get often. Get your cards out, bitches. <laughs> uh, it's going to be 12%. And it will increase 1% each year starting in 2025, capping at 18% in 2030. 18%. Well, okay. So that's like, that's, that's like a long Col- milk. That's a, that's Colorado's yeah. tax rate. That's a numbers. gradual milk. Yeah. Uh, well, so those, those that stay on the medicinal side though, then that means it'll become a fully tax free thing just as any normal medicine. Right. Yeah. Here, here's the great thing. No limit is specified on the number of retail licenses to be issued. So it's like, they're not liquor licenses. Right. We could have 20 here. Right. Which, I mean, would defeat the fucking purpose of having it at all. Well, they should do the same goddamn thing with bars. I'm just saying. And local governments cannot ban them. They can limit the number allowed or say, you can only be right here, motherfucker. Yeah, no, there were a lot of people uh, sitting around, like, kind of rubbing their palms together going, Ooh. I can't wait to say no to this. Yeah, exactly. Guess what, bitches? Exactly. Oh, you're going to have to get all that revenue yourselves. Oh, bummer. Oh, that <laughs> sucks. Uh, let's see. Public consumption, of course, remains illegal. Uh, but businesses can offer on-site consumption if certain requirements are met. Like a... Like a weed bar. Like an Amsterdam, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I kind of dig that. You're going to open a hookah, wonder, sh- a hookah shop? I wonder what the requirements are that you walk there from your house and walk back. Catch a, catch a ride on the, uh, on the public transportation system. Yeah. <laughs> just, to, just to stick it to the man even more. <laughs> but, like, uh, the, the quandary I have is, like, okay, guy sells weed. Sells weed. Right. Even the sell of the weed, that shit's going to get expunged, right? Depends on the amount. From what I understand, if it was like a uh, like a like a criminal amount of like to where it becomes then possession with intent to distribute, that's where they might be a little fucked. It's like, look, we'll we'll bump that down to a misty. <laughs> well, but I mean, but yeah, but if you're uh, if you're in a position where you got caught and they decided to go ahead and and uh, throw your ass in a cage for a, a night or whatever just because you had marijuana on you at any point, no, that's supposed to get expunged. But Good yeah, deal. but if you were but if you were peddling, I don't I don't know about that. Yeah, that's a that's an area I don't know about. But overall, so far so good in my opinion. Uh, well, I do also like the medicinal tax being dropped. Yeah, I like that because like cool, we don't have to make money off you motherfuckers right now, which will eventually weed out everybody. Just had a card to get high. Right. They would rather pay that tax than spend that fifty bucks every month. Right. So. It's really, it's going to help that side and it's going to give everybody options and we're not going to run out like we fucking did on Monday, which will lead me to the 420 story. Okay. So Monday, we didn't have anything. We had nothing. 419, bare bones. (laughs) Late that evening, we got something in. Got it ready to go. 420 comes out, man. We had a taco truck from Clovis. That apparently their tacos were really shitty. Really? But shitty enough. Well, everybody in the store thought they were shitty. Huh. But they sold out. So they had a really good day. Wow. <laughs> because there's like an empty lot next to that building. Yeah. And you couldn't even find a parking space in there. I had, I had to park there for the day. That's bizarre. We were giving away Frisbees, lip balms, beer koozies, which I got one for you. Well, who's going near a dispenser on 420? Well, all right, that's <laughs> whatever. But if you got a taco truck, fucking everybody, man, everybody. Know, that's that's, uh, that's a that's a hard pass for me. <laughs> it's, I, but I will say, if it hadn't been if it hadn't been actually for uh, for the medical system that we have, I don't know that I would have survived the pandemic because I did suspend treatment on my. Uh, I've got a condition that I have to deal with uh, that requires injections all the time. I suspended that because uh, on the advice that it will allow your immune system to actually be able to fight this fucking thing off. Maybe, you know, um, as it turns out, that was probably a little overblown. I, in retrospect, I should have never suspended those treatments. Now trying to resume them is yeah. turning out to be a great big old pain in my ass. That's the big bummer. I mean, I, I still think you made the right choice. 
it, it's easy to say you didn't now because it's a year later, dude. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, you still made the right choice. Because right. who knows? Who knows what would have fucking happened? But, you know, so for all the people like, no, nobody really needs that. Well, you know, go fuck yourself. Because I, I do. You know, I mean, I'm, and I'm not even talking about for the intoxicant effect. I'm talking about that it nips the, the high, whenever I take it, like increased levels of CBD in almost anything, it kicks it right in the ass. And, and the delivery of a THC delivery on the 10 to one or whatever is not bad. Yeah. I it, mean, it, it's it, it takes, it does take the edge off because there is something to what's called the entourage effect and it's THC and CBD working together as one entity to provide so many benefits on top of, yeah, it, you're high. You get high. But there's just so much more going on right now. Yeah. Like, I have a cart right now that fights antifungal. Granted, I don't have any foot fungus or nothing or anything weird going on. But, I mean, this shit exists. You don't have no la- uh, lady fungus going on? <laughs> I don't got no labia majora issues. <laughs> 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 but I mean, it's just, it, there's so much more of a benefit. I spent 15 minutes with uh, a coworker of mine educating this woman who had, had a, 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 a family member who's in dire need of CBD. And it's like, yeah, here, uh, extolling the benefits of this thing, just especially with what this in- individual endured. So you needed like a pain management, but without the, intoxicating effect of thc wow yeah i mean because realistically as a medicine now i gotta say this too is that man i've been issued some through the va that will fuck me up too just letting you know i mean yeah. they're they're all they're all in the pain med variety of course they're all also dubiously in, in some they've all got side effects i'm not a big fan of you know oh yeah absolutely i mean if you're trying to find actually just the real and i'm not this isn't an the entire, real. this isn't exactly an entire episode that's dedicated to uh trying to justify or or utilize uh efficacy of uh of utilization of, of medicinal cannabis but but the reality is this is that i would not have made it through this past year because of the fact that who knows i i could tell when i would think all right i need a few days just to clear my head or whatever and by laying off of THC, I was also laying off the CBD. And that's when I'd get these damn flare-ups. And they'd come out of the middle of nowhere. They'd hang around for days and days and days. Most of the time, I get a flare-up. It's around for a few hours. And then it eventually gets the fuck out of here. Within, within six or eight hours or so, there are some that might hang out a day. In this past year, I've had some that would hang around for three, four days. I remember that picture you showed me. Yeah, the which one? Uh, <laughs> knee or ankle? Your knee. Or, your knee. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I don't know. It was it was disgusting. It's been though. fucking me up all year, you know. Because <laughs> I mean, like that's your ankle looks like what my ankle would look like after I've rolled it, like fucking just spraying the yeah. shit out of it. Only less blood in the extremities of the toes. Yeah. But man, like it, it's that is like serious shit that those injection injections are required for you to fucking exist normally normal yeah. life no it is you know i mean that's i had to come to grips with that shit a couple of years ago but. and on that once you get back on that the benefit of the cbd and thc together you're gonna it's gonna be amazing yeah especially like when your body gets back into that flow of like okay we need to just calm the fuck down and quit attacking this shit right so i don't know so fingers crossed hopefully i'll uh, my treatments will be back to normal by june that's fingers crossed so, yeah you know. absolutely man absolutely anyway uh so like, yeah long story short 420 day busy as fuck kind of like, like retail on black friday oh man I, I haven't moved that fast since i worked at sears during black friday at the hardware department yeah or like brett was telling us last week that cinco de mayo whips his ass yeah because you, know, you know that torchy store that he's at and you know in Colorado. yeah because uh the one we went to in austin didn't serve booze yeah, no, they that all of theirs do. They're huge How on crazy. They're I huge wonder... on their margaritas, on their Mexican beers, and he said, "Yeah, he said that's it. Cinco wow. de Mayo comes around. People want a taco, and they want to have a Mexican beer. May not have any of that 364 days a year, but they want it that day." Damn, that's great, dude. That dude is fucking killing it. Yeah. Ugh, I feel like we're all killing it in our own respective ways. Sure. Transvert couldn't be stronger. <laughs> uh meet update for the week really don't have one we're still uh, kind of in a holding pattern uh, i'm drinking it yeah well because it's the more delicious. the quicker that goes away then the quicker we can rack that that's in the uh, five gallon yeah. over i was given some thought to it 
of moving it over, topping it off, and we should have still around about two gallons or so, maybe. Um, I was thinking about going ahead and putting the remaining two gallons into uh, two of our one-gallon little test runs, you know, test boys. Yeah. Um, and actually maybe trying to figure out what the next full scale we want to do. Um, I mean, if we wanted to do a piment batch like we keep talking about doing. It we, would be nice to do something different. If we wanted to do like a coffee bean batch, we could definitely do that. I'm I mean, interested in that as well. Yeah. Sure. I mean, there, are, there are a number of different directions we could go um, without committing to a full run. And then so utilizing what we have, that's already a batch one ready to go. It just needs to go into a secondary and get flavored. And I don't know why it always seemed like if we started a gallon batch, for some reason it just didn't. It, it something would be off. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it, because you're you're getting a, a fuller utilization of the sugars present by the yeast on a full batch. If you're right. doing a five or a six gallon run, okay, it, it's. It's a lot more across the board. You get a lot more of an even. You would think it's like, oh, okay, well, it's a much smaller container, so that yeast can break it all down. For some reason, there is some reason that they can't, and I think it has a lot to do with uh, anaerobic behavior out of the yeast itself, is that they overconsume, and then it makes it where they, can, they can't break down the honey as easily and as efficiently. Damn, you sound smart. No, I got my moments. <laughs> this there, is that not drinking shit. There are uh, there are people in this town that would tell you you're wrong. <laughs> I, I don't like it, man. I don't like this sober you. Uh, you, you sound too smart. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm going to, I'm gonna have to go fucking find me a dumber friend. Yeah, there are there are those we have had in this town. I, I might know a few. Yeah, I might know a few. Uh, let's go ahead and move along to uh, checking in with LJ. We we've been in, kind of missing that guy. Like. Tra- you what a couple ships yeah. passing the night is yeah I, I i i felt like real shit hill for last week but man when when the triumvirate is together yeah th- that's kind of like the one thing's like even if i had plans with the lady that night right i'd have to cancel them yeah that's the fucking dedication i have to this triangle yeah well it all it all worked out last episode's uh last episode will certainly rank right up there with among my favorites so uh let's go ahead and check in with lj uh, finally get a uh get a metal update for uh what's going on around the world i saw the release list today and i immediately felt really bad for him <laughs> <laughs> maybe he found some gold who knows yeah the old children of boredom put out a well i shouldn't talk ooh, shit with lio dead but uh but actually boat him after boat him after dark boat him after midnight, midnight. yeah i mean it sounded like some weird 80s you know late yeah, 80s I don't like get that overnight show shit after midnight yeah like what what do you mean what does it mean you're cooler that's about the only one i really really truly recognize dropping today yeah so uh let's go ahead and uh get the update from lj and see what's going down with lowdown on the metal update for this week and welcome back everybody to the metal portion of the mead metal and mma podcast it's your boy lj lowdown kbx whatever you want to call me and the only copyright infringement we care about on this show is whenever you steal from us. So with that in mind, let's get into some fucking metal. First on this list, <laughs> Bongzilla. The album is called Weed Skansen. You know, it's perfect that they release us so close to 420. Hell yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. Choke up and rock out. Fuck yeah. It actually sounds really cool too. Extremely sludgy. Very heavy. And also, that album artwork is cool as shit. Or, if you'll pardon the expression, dope as fuck. All right, next up on this magical list of ill repute, we have Dirty Honey with their album Dirty Honey. Um, I actually listened to some of this, and it sounds just like if ACDC were to have Led Zeppelin's vocalist. I mean, there's no way you can go wrong with that combination, man. It's hard rock. How could you not like that? I mean, that's my kind of shit right there. And in fact, I think I'm actually going to purchase this album, too. So yeah, check them out. Perfect for listening to when you're high or cruising. All right, next up on this diabolically dysfunctional list of uh we have Morse, Portnoy, and George. The albums are called Cover to Cover and Cover to Cover with the number two. Uh, I like those guys, but I hate those fucking names. But I guess they're cover albums, so I mean, you can't go wrong. So go ahead and check them, peep them, buy them, love them. Strongly dislike them. Whatever. Next up on this list is Bodum After Midnight. Uh, the album is called Paint the Sky with Blood EP. And uh, apparently, I'm out of the loop on this because I guess Alexi Laiho died. But anyways, uh, I think they sound better than Children of Bodum. My opinion. Not a popular one. But also, I like the comment section of the video I watched for the 
title of the song named after the album, which says, uh, when you release an uh, album after you're dead, that's metal as fuck. <laughs> I agree with whoever posted that. That is true. Yes. So buy it, check it out. This is heavy as fuck, and it just got me so amped up. And now we're going to move from the new releases to the news releases. So uh, going off of Loudwire, if you guys are too lazy to go on there yourself, there's an article that says, All the times Ted Nugent denied COVID-19 before he got it. And he revealed that he tested positive this month. Karma's is kind of a bitch. I'm not a big fan of his anyway. Anyways. Um, Unity TX drop, a heavy cover of Megan Thee Stallion's Cry Baby. Not to be dramatic, but this song goes hard. According to Loudwire, which I, if, if history serves right, we can't really trust them. As far as we can pick them up and throw them. Uh... The Pretty Reckless Land 6th Mainstream Rock Chart Chopper. What the fuck am I reading? Anyways, why am I doing this? Why am I reading all these news things? Anyways, uh, congrats to the Pretty Reckless who have another chart-topping single on their hands with a recent single, And So It Went. This extends the band's record on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Airplay chart, becoming the 6th chart-topping single for a female-fronted band. Nice. Keep going, man. You guys need to chart yourselves more or whatever the fuck you're doing. Keep doing it. And that concludes this week's portion of the Made Metal and MMA Metal podcast. So I uh, just wanted to throw this out there. Apologies to anybody who was uh, aware of my technical difficulties the past while. It sucks. I've been uh, trying to make sure that I better myself in these upcoming weeks. So expect releases to be more consistent and done ahead of schedule. That way, they can be put into the segments. That's all I got for this week. Take it away, Kevin and Brandon. Or if you're ending the show, then see ya. Go Fuck yourself, rock the fuck out, all that other happy horse shit. You guys just stay safe, be care, don't catch COVID, don't spread COVID, and rock the fuck out. See ya! I think I sharted when I was talking about Alexi Laiho. I'm I'm going to hell. (laughs) You know, I'm always amazed that that guy can kind of, like I said, I didn't, I I, I legitimately thought, well, this is going to be maybe the biggest challenge this guy has had since he's been, uh, you know, our correspondent here on uh, the metal side of things. Well done, as always, man. Dude has a podcast of his own. Yes, he does. See that? You remember, like a uh, wow. I think his very first couple that he had did for the you know done for the Mead Metal and MMA podcast was with his nephew Braxton. Yeah, Brixton, Braxton is Braxton. Yeah, um, yeah. They're no, they're doing one separately now. I don't know, what, didn't catch the name of it, but uh, but he told me he was over uh, across the state line today uh, recording that one. So, outlaw. It's pretty cool because it seems to me like it's a kind of like a rap R and B version of what we do. Good. Well, that's it. I, man. With all things, if there's if there's a hole in the market, is what they call it. You know, in the radio business. Which, but, by the way, I mean that as a compliment. I didn't want to. I yeah, no, no. It. But it means like if there's if there's a need, fulfill it. Feed it. Yeah. Feed the need. Exactly. So good. Good on L. So in L J, that's the thing too. Surely all of you know by now that dude is is heavy into the rap scene, heavy into the metal scene. And, He's heavy you know. into into every scene. Yeah, <laughs> every scene. But uh, but we need to get him down here again. Man. Yeah, we do. We do. L J, this is an invitation. We need to get you here before the end of the year, bruh. Uh, with that, we got uh, we got any other metal stuff to get to? There's only one thing I want to talk about because I feel like L J covered it bueno. And it's something that, of course, I've been following since I saw his picture inside the Capitol building. It's John Schaffer, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Now, everything seemed to be in a holding pattern until, gosh, what about, I don't know if it was last week. I can't recall because that whole weekend is kind of like a a real fuzzy, kind of like lucid dream you're trying to hold on to. Thursday through Sunday was just a, a brain hammer. Yeah. But, uh. Basically, Schaffer pleaded guilty to not. He was charged with six. And those of you who don't know, he's a guitar player for. Um, he uh, was a guitar player. Was was <laughs> was. I, let's, let's make sure we're using that in the past. Tense. For a lot of things, I dug. I was a big fan of Iced Earth in the uh, in the fucking late nineties, primarily because I was drawn to the artwork because it was done by Todd McFarlane of Spawn fame. Right, kick ass shit. And, but and did uh, demons and wizards, which was a great duo with the uh, Hansi from the front man from uh, Blind Guardian. Wow. Well, all that's gone. Yeah. But he's out of jail now. After yeah. eighty nine fucking days in jail, dude. But he's just kind of out to gather his shit and ready to get ready to go back to jail, right? I like 
I'm still debating on whether or not the podcast picture is going to be Valentina Shevchenko or John Schaffer getting out of jail. <laughs> it's a tough choice. Yeah, it it's is. It's a tough choice, but this picture, it, it, I mean, it just look. he's got a kiss hat on. He looks like he's aged. He already looked kind of old, even in that fucking angry picture where he's pointing that finger, being, being the American, man. He looks like he aged five years yeah. in three months. Jeez. Well, that, I mean, being in custody. For, for a guy that doesn't have a history, you yeah. know what I mean? A, he's been a, he's an asshole. Yeah. Fucking plaid shirt on that has like a little name tag on it. Like if you're in a biker gang, which that's real classy. Right. I want a flannel shirt with my name tag on it that says Hog, Boss Hog. Fuck that. <laughs> and some gal that's like there to pick him up. Got his shit in what looks like Walmart bags. <laughs> right. Man, well... <laughs> If anything, that should tell everybody. It doesn't matter if you have a clean record. You've never done anything wrong your entire life. Anything that even passes muster for sedition, you're you're going to get hammered. Yeah. You, you fucking go fuck with America. Yeah. And everybody that has these stickers on the back of their cars that say, if you're offended by this flag and big old fucking USA flag, I'll help you pack. You are the motherfuckers that should be angry by this, and for some reason, I feel like you're not. Yeah, no, it's it, you know because it all became politicized. So if you're like a Trump guy, then yeah, it's like, well, it was peaceful. Yeah, yeah, until they like started, I don't know, killing folk and breaking in and shit. I mean, whatever. If you're still defending it in April of 2021, I, I don't, I don't know what to make of you. Yeah, it's weird. So Schaffer, three and a half to four and a half years in yeah. Fetty, in Club Fed. Yeah. Oof. And he's been uh, accepted into the Witness Protection Program sponsorship. Oh, so his guitar riff days are done then. Yeah. He, this dude might be shoveling shit in Nebraska. I mean, oh, dude, what a fall. Well, I mean, that is an epic fall. I'm yeah. getting a phone call right now. I don't know why, but I'm not going to answer it. Yeah. Uh but I can hear it in the microphone because it's on vibrate because I'm a fucking gentleman. Good man. See, I forgot to turn mine down because all the uh, people usually uh, hit me up during during the show. Uh, we, since we're starting like an hour and a half late, yeah, they're, 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 it's already out. They, are, they think we're already done. So none of them are bugging the piss out of me right now. So Yeah. So anyway, we say goodbye to Iced Earth yeah. at the bare minimum. Uh, anything else on the metal side? It's time to move on that kick-ass card. We've got a huge pay-per-view coming up tomorrow. UFC, what are we up to, 261? Yes, sir. UFC 261. Live crowd. Live crowd. That I, 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 For some reason, I hate those motherfuckers. I've been around them twice, and I fucking loathe them. But I miss them when I'm watching. It is a little weird because I didn't know how, how I was really going to feel about it. About eleven months ago, well, almost almost a year ago, yeah, when really. they when they uh, restarted fights, but you know, with no crowds, right? But I'm not sure if I'm gonna be big on this. I kind of dig it because of this is because you can hear the corners specifically. You can help hear them yell certain things, sure. and it kind of gives you a whole different insight that you can't hear. You can't hear over crowds, so you know that goes away. The other problem, though, is I do think it gives some fighters a very unfair advantage. Yeah, and you get to hear the commentators. I don't know how big a fan I am of that. Yeah. Because they are analyzing and breaking shit down. And, I mean, you know, that could help. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, so actually to have a full crowd back. And it's not even like they're doing partials or anything. Dana White had said he would not even think about doing anything unless it was a full crowd again. That's why the next fight card or next pay-per-views in Texas. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. And he kept his promise, dude. I mean, give it. I have to give him that. He said he'd be first. Yep. We've had some. We had WrestleMania, but that was not full attendance. WrestleMania. No. There were cut out fucking people in that crowd. This is sold. Well, I don't know if it's actually sold out, but it could. It could sell out if it wanted to. I'm assuming it probably is. I saw know. some front row seat tickets on sale today for eight grand, and it wasn't like resale. Oh, a little blue dot on Ticketmaster where it's like available. Oh. Not the circle, circle well, thing. I guess we want to throw eight grand, but fuck that. In the seats right behind it, nine hundred bucks. I wonder. I wonder yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm, I'm sure that front row, like you get a blowjob from John Anik or something. Ugh. But yeah, I mean, he probably uses a lot of teeth. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, I think <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the fucking most random thing I think we've ever had on a show. I think 
that having crowds back are going to be the biggest benefit to the fighters. I think it's going to fucking do something to them, especially ones that have fought during the pandemic. Because there are some fighters that haven't fought since before the pandemic. Could have almost said Ian Edwards, right, at one point. Yeah, no shit. But uh, so it, I think that's going to be the biggest bump. We're going to see some fighters with some fires lit under their asses yeah. tomorrow, I think. Yeah, well, but it is one of those that does go a very long way to allowing us to kind of get back to regular on a sport that we uh, that we hold near and dear enough to where we base a show around it every week. So UFC 261 coming up tomorrow. The main card is bonkers because the fact is there are three title fights, but there are also two very solid fights on that. Usually they throw us one to start a pay-per-view of a couple of assholes we barely have heard of or haven't heard of at all. And, then, uh, and it's like, why, how, how, why am I supposed to get excited about this? Then there will be a fight with a couple of journeymen. Yeah. Then they will slow it down and bring the, the, the momentum completely to a screeching halt with usually a, a 115 fight. You know, a couple of ladies at 115 that have really no inertia, you know, or, or, or the, the occasional dude fight at 125. Some, one of those to really, really bring the action down yeah. or, or get a couple of grapplers. And that's, you know, but and then they usually have a reasonable co-main and, and usually a really good main event. I, I feel like this one is solid across the board. I mean, I feel like they're blowing a serious load on this one. Yeah. I mean, and, and the next card, 262. That's already shaping up to be huge. Is that the one in May? Uh, 262 is... No, no, June. The, uh, the fight card with uh, Oliver and Chandler for the, uh, for the lightweight belt. Okay. And uh, Leon Edwards and Nate Diaz. And El Kaku and Benny El Dariush. That's the fucking fight on there. That in the fucking main event. I would say that one is great if you're a fight fan. The one coming up tomorrow is great for everybody. Oh yeah, that that's what like that's what makes it great. That's what makes it great. And then of course, uh, you got fucking Connor and Poirier in July. But this is just oh, this is going to be a treat, dude. Yeah, man. And so, Anthony Smith and Jim Crute opening things up. There isn't a fight on here, a normal fight. I mean, all the all the all the boys fighting. It's going to be all the big boys. I was going to ask you if you wanted to go all the way through the entire card, but then I realized well the prelims. Early prelims, I don't, I, I, I don't recognize a soul. Dana went the route of getting fighters that really aren't don't have names, but share something in common with the champs on the card to to fight. Yeah, there's a lot of people on that uh, fight pass prelim I've never heard of. Right, and shocker, I, I'm not I'm not the type of guy to go do that kind of homework. You right. Know? Well, and kicks off four o'clock our time, which. Uh, Shit, that's a full hour for you. are even off tomorrow. Exactly. So, uh, prelim, though, that'll start at 6. And, and again, the prelims, there are, there are a couple of names. Like, I recognize the guy. I'm not familiar. I'd have, to, I'd have to get online and figure out who he fought, when, what the outcome was. And it'll probably maybe uh, click a little bell of recognition there. Um, however, I will say that uh, the, the main event of the prelims, that's, that's, a, that's a hell of a matchup. Your favorite uh, Brazilian, Cowboy Alex Oliveira. Yeah. Well, and this one's at 170, and the weigh-ins were today, and I made guess he weight. made weight. No, which one, is, which no is, one botched. Which is bizarre, because that guy, usually at 170, he's fucking he's, he's, it's, it's like he takes a hard pass on any kind of a cut, and then he gets in there and acts like he's accomplished something. Well, yeah, it's called cheating, sir. Yeah. By the it, way, this just said, two hours, 20 minutes later, that computer's ready to go. Yeah, oh, we, oh, uh, God. yeah, this, this Microsoft update just got, yeah. Two hours, two hours, 20 minutes. That's insane. So both fighters coming off losses. I I mean, I, I, I don't like, I will root for anybody that's fighting against Alex Oliveira. Sure. For that stupid little man bun he's got. He does have beautiful gray eyes for a Brazilian. I'll give him that. But uh, at that, ever since that day, he, he botched weight and was a dick about it. Yeah. Even after a win. You figure you're your most contrite if you win after botching weight. This is like, what the point? This does absolutely nothing for me. No, no. He was in there acting like he just won the strap. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's clearly... Randy Brown. Randy Brown by head kick. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know how he would go about it, but damn it. I'm certainly rooting for him because again, just like you, I am not rooting for that particular Oliveira. No, no, there's, there's a few more. I like Charles, Charles next month, not Alex. 
And that opens up to the main card, kicking off at 8 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, because we ain't quoting Eastern here. Well, it's Mountain we're Daylight, but yes. Mountain Daylight? Oh, that's right. That changes around, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, shit. That's fine. <laughs> Until I ain't learned it. I don't, I don't think we got any Magellans out there going, well, well hold on now. I don't know. Someone probably in the comments. We were getting shit talk for Yari's stuff a while back. Then we had somebody start posting some weird sexy time stuff on there. That, that Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I'm glad that even inanimate objects are, are checking us out. That's cool. <laughs> you know? As long as they're watching, I don't give a fuck. Check so, out sexy tit time. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those dubious links like, I'm not opening that. <laughs> now, when I hear the name Jim Crute, I find it hard to remember him sometimes. Until it sounded like your dog just like let out a fart and then barked. Yeah, he just that was just his growl and then a bark. <laughs> Shut up, honky. Uh, but I, I I can rarely like remember him until I see see a picture of him. Right, and I see that fucking tit tattoo of the fucking like I don't know if it's a raven or what, but it has the umbrella logo in the middle of it. Right, I'm like, oh that guy, fighting Anthony Smith. You got a uh, you got a number six rank going against a number thirteen. At light heavyweight, which is really in a state of flux right now. My problem with Anthony Smith, every time I pick him, he goes out and gets a loss. <laughs> so I feel a little bit weird about picking him on this fight. But uh, but I do like him over Crute, uh, only because the fact is that he's multifaceted as a fighter. The thing goes ground, he's all right. Smith, Smith is good standing, he's good on the ground, he's good at anything in between. See, I have a weird, it's not even like something based off fact. I just feel like people that work for whoever UFC has their TV deal with at the time as an analyst or anything, unless you're a champ and got the job, if you just got the job, you rarely do well in your fights because you're pulling double duty on everything. Right. And Anthony Smith is fucking great. I can't wait for this guy to retire to go and do this no, no, he's full time. He, he's actually maybe one of the more insightful, like with real information people yeah, can use. Absolutely, I I think he's going to do great in the second aspect of his fucking career. Right, and he'll do it for a long time. But I think I'm going Jim Crude on this. Dude's twelve and one, man. Yeah, no, that's it's a, a solid it, record. It, and it's a it's a it's a hard guy to go against. But again, it's two hundred five. I mean, someone just has to land first. After that, one eighty five. Two guys that have had some serious up and down in their career, but coming off wins, both of them, you're high all going against Chris White. And it, well, yeah. Hall Weidman too, technically. Yeah. They fought like what? 10 years ago. Yeah, it's been a decade. No, yeah, it's been, I know there was no pause, but yeah, no, no, it was, <laughs> it was 10 years ago. Um, you know, and both of them are actually using that. Now that one, Weidman actually knocked out your eye hall, but yeah, this time around your eye halls talking about how striking's a lot better. How his uh, skills, uh, you know, of being able to counter or a lot better and all this other stuff. Weidman is still a, a solid, solid wrestler with a really solid camp there on Long Island. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, don't... <sighs> Chris Weidman is 15-5, and five, right? But doesn't it feel like he loses all the time. Feels like he's here lately. Well, considering he was, what, undefeated until, yeah, I think until he had that first one, and then they kind of started coming pretty regularly. Yeah, like fucking just like sweet candy. And, and I know he's coming off a win. And, I, I mean, I got to admit, there's there's a part of me that's pulling for this guy. I like Chris Weidman. Sure. I like what he did to Anderson Silva. I really do. And I like what he did do in the, in the second fight, to be honest. Like, ooh, ooh. So much for chopping them banana trees down with your leg. Well, if you need a middleweight to defeat Brazilians, he's your guy. That is your, that's Captain America right there. But, I mean, and, and we'll see. <laughs> um, I think that that one's going to be a great fight. It primarily, but it depends on the Uriah Hall that shows up is the problem I have. Which, by the way, Uriah Hall is even money. Chris Weidman is a slight favorite. Yeah, I, I, I think Vegas has got that one right. There's no way that that one... Nobody's looking at that going, well, I got the slam dunk here. I know who's going to win. Because Standing, man, I have my doubts on Weidman. Yeah. If it goes to the ground, I have no doubts in Weidman. That, that's that's going to be what it is. If he is able to get in there and get a shoot takedown immediately, then then immediately turn in or, or establish the momentum where that fight's going to be, yeah. and then Hall can't come back from it. I like Uriah Hall in a finish. Yeah. I like him in a finish. Well, he's not a Brazilian, so I like him for that yeah, aspect against yeah. Weidman. That so. dude's very Jamaican. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Chris Weidman don't do well against anybody that ain't Brazilian. Yeah. That's going to do like an ancestry 
fucking DNA. So I'll just like get a little bit of their spit and do it. Like, oh, he's like an eighth fucking Brazilian. I got a shot. I got a shot. <laughs> Line it up. Which uh, the Anthony Smith crude fight, Anthony Smith's two to one underdog in that fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking him only primarily because of the fact I do like the way he fights. I like his approach to a fight. Now, normally we'd have a little bit more boring chat about the next two or three fights coming up before the title fight. But there are three title fights. Yep. And they're all amazing. Five fights, main card, three of them are title fights. I'm going to go to my special secret place for the first one. My lady fair, Valentina Shevchenko, the women's flyweight champion, fighting Jessica Andrade, which, all right. I mean, who, like, who else yeah. is there? Right. Who else is there? She bumps up to flyweight, gets a win, gets a title shot. I'm all right with that. Problem yeah, well, because she had her uh, she had her daylights beaten out by uh, Wei Li Zhang. So yeah, that <laughs> put in her place after what she did to Joanna. Was that before or after the Joanna fight? That was before, um, right? I want to say it was after because uh, she fought Joanna for the belt. It yeah, was, yeah, and then and, fought. Pu- and punched her forehead until uh, Joanna looked like for, looked like uh, Dobby out that of that was for uh, an know. interim belt. And then Whaley fought fucking Andrade because I think, I don't know, I might be getting that wrong. Bottom line is, she was getting fucking stuffed at 115. Well, Andrade decided to go ahead and defend her belt over in the Far East somewhere, right? Yeah. It was all pre-pandemic, but I don't remember exactly where it was at. I want to I say it was in Hong Kong, but I, I don't think that's right. Yeah, after the Nama Yunus knockout, Whaley came in and got the same thing done to her in about 42 seconds. Uh, then after that, the Nami Yunus rematch, which she lost, and then uh, bumped up to 125 and uh, knocked out Chukagi in late in the first. Well, but a lot of gals do that. So They do. Gals can be crazy sometimes. No, no. Chukagi is just, she. I, I don't know what it is. She fights kind of a <laughs> little lackluster. There's not a lot of spark to it. Yeah. And, and she commonly loses. Pretty regular. The bottom line is this. Is Jessica Andrade the one to do it? Well, I don't know. I, because my problem is this. When she beat Nama Yunus, it wasn't because of her striking. It was not that. It was because Nama Yunus refused to let go of a, of a hold. She refused yeah. to let go of a headlock. It was a bad choice on her part. Yeah, and uh, so Andrade kind of spiked her and knocked her out. You know, I'm, So it wasn't so much because of her overwhelming striking winning her that strap in the first place. It was overwhelming striking that lost her the strap. And she's not going to see any less out of Shevchenko. I think you're. I think you might be a little crazy if you take Andrade, but then again, it's the crazy people that make the money. It is. You got to take the chances to make the money. But the problem is, you got Valentina five five, which is short, sixty seven inch reach, thirty eight inch leg reach. Jessica Andrade, five foot one. Yep. <laughs> I had a girlfriend two inches shorter back in my day. A couple inches shorter, she counts as a midge. That's true. She gets like parking privileges or something i don't know <laughs> but a 62 inch reach with the fists and a 35 inch reach with the legs which outside the leg kicks she rarely i would say uses yeah no she's certainly she's a striker a, she is a striker she yeah. is a fisty striker i think i think valentina catches her not with the, it might be with a gnarly fucking kick to the dome as well i envision a lot of head kicks tomorrow i yeah. really do that's possible. I do. Th- I, I don't know that we're going to get a finish out of that. I think uh, Valentina's really found a groove that she enjoys of kind of going out there and beating the hell out of people. And How, then, however, if I was in Vegas, it's plus three fifty. I might put a C note on Andrade just in case. Oof. Out of all the out of all the underdogs of the night, I don't know. Actually, Masvidal is a minus a plus three fifty. I might go that route actually instead because I feel like he has a better chance of beating Usman than Andrade does beating Shevchenko. Yeah. Okay. Third round finish for me. For, for my uh, lady for fair. Valentina. And right. we will celebrate at Metro PCS. <laughs> uh, let's see, that puts us up. But, well, I, I guess if there are three title fights, technically two of them are co-mains. Yeah, I don't know. I think there is no co-main in this. These three are main events. Yeah. I mean, technically your main event's the last fight of the night. Right. I don't think there's any co-main here. But uh, we do got the straw weight. Battle, which I'm so glad to see Rose back and fighting for that title again. Yeah. I mean, Nami Yunus is always, uh, I, mean, I mean, we like her around here. We don't have anything against Hell her. Yeah. That's, she's a little, little odd, but, you know. Uh, That's what I like about her. Yeah. She doesn't smile. Yeah. 
she's just she's dead. She's dead in the eyes. Right. And I don't know why, but she makes that fucking short hairdo work. Yeah, well, but she's going to be uh, taking on basically the uh, the woman that beat the living piss out of her opponent in Andrade and Weili Zhang, the uh, strawweight champion right now. Yeah. I and, mean, the, and the funny thing, you would think this was going to be like a striking battle. Um, I don't think so. I think Thug wants to take to the ground and choke her out. I think that's where, the, that's where her magic is at yeah. in this fight. Because I don't think you're going to outstrike Weili Zhang. At least the one we saw fight against uh, Joanna... Uh, Yo and Jacek, that that Wei Li Zhang, blah, 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 fucking just murder in those hands. Yeah, and and Zhang Wei Li, one hundred percent takedown D. Well, which that's, somebody's got something to be said. Somebody's got to break that at some point. So, and she doesn't normally uh, shoot for takedowns either. Twenty three percent of the time, when she does it, she lands it. Uh, man, I want to see Rose win. Yeah, I do. That's my. That's in my heart. That's sure. one of my heart. I want to win. I don't know if her striking, because she can load up and land and fucking rattle you. Oh, yeah. But Zhang Weili is going to punch you five or six times before you do. And I, I, I'm curious to see how Rose will deal with that. Because she, I mean, she dealt with the onslaughts well in the Andrade fight, well enough to win that motherfucker. Right. She's going to have some time to do this. Because, I mean, Rose got out of that fight, that rematch, and did not look pretty in the face afterwards. She was busted up. Yeah. But, I mean, people made artwork out of it. She was happy about it. I think Rose is going to pull it off, but I think it's going to go the distance. Really? I, 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 I just think that Wei Li Zhang is going to get an early, early finish. I, I think first, second round. I'm all right with that. I, f- I feel like if that happens, though, we say goodbye to Rose Namajunas. I really yeah. do. Who knows? I'm shocked she came back. Yeah. I really am. After, when she said she was done, I was like, with everything she's been through and her mental capacity... She might be done. Maybe this is bet. She's going to go and garden on the internet. Yeah, I, I, I like that pick too. That that's that's a tough one for me. That's why I, I don't mean, think Rose is going to finish her. Yeah, no, I, I I hope that Rose gets the win. I do, but I, uh, I, I the the realist in me recognizes what I'm, go, I'm going with my heart. It's, and I know my heart. I'm going to fail. It's going. I'm going. My heart's going to be broken. Yeah. It. This other one though, I've been teeter tottering all day today. The main event, welterweight title fight. Kamaru Usman, minus 455 favorite, going against the plus 350 man. The game bred, Jorge Masvidal. I, I, my, the weird thing with Kamaru is that I think by him being just such a dominant wrestler, his fights maybe not the, uh, the most interesting things you can watch. Guy doesn't get a lot of finishes, although he's had a few. Gilbert. Um, yeah, and uh, Covington, he broke his jaw. Yeah. Uh, his, all I his mean, finishes were like significant. Yeah, but uh, but be. the thing is, is that he makes wrestling look so easy and effortless. Yeah, and in the process of doing so, and plus he was saying some really wicked shit this week about how really he's just he 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 wants to make sure that when he retires that he didn't just beat somebody. He wants to make sure everybody that he defeated goes, oh <laughs> fuck that guy. And he's starting really with Masvidal. I mean, Gilbert Burns was a teammate, and look what he did to yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> he made him cry. I mean, he was crying afterwards, dude. If this fight was like two or three years ago, when Masvidal was really getting that big surge at that time, I might feel differently. But I, I don't see how anybody, well, I don't see how anybody right now. Let's go back to the last time Masvidal fought. When was that? Oh yeah, when he fought fucking Kamaru Usman for the belt on six days yeah, notice over on Fight Island. Before that, he was uh, in the afterglow of the that Nate Diaz fight, BMF fight, yeah. This is a big fight for Masvidal. I feel like this is the one. If he goes out there and fails, then he's just a personality. Then I he, think he's so. got he, he's going to keep that popularity going. Yeah. There's no way that dude's too charismatic to drop it. But if he doesn't get the job done tomorrow, I, I mean the conversation it, it moves on. We move on to Colby. Right. Colby's next in line. I think Kamaru is going to get it done. Yeah, but I, 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 I really do. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with the outcome if, if Masvidal got the win. I don't have an issue. I'd like It'd be entertaining as fuck. It really but, would. But I just legitimately don't see how that gets done without him pulling some weird shit like he did against Ben Askren. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, 
he'll he'll be no that knee got him the cover of UFC four. Now the the UFC curse cover curse is real because both Adesanya and Masvidal suffered some pretty significant losses after they appeared on that cover. Yeah, look at that one back on UFC two was had uh, <coughs> had Connor and Ronda on. Yeah, the front. and then Connor popped up again and had the Khabib fight. <laughs> He's been on that bitch twice. Wow. What's weird is the first one was uh, Jones and Gustafson. So you kind of really, I mean, Jones' career, well, not his career, his life kind of went down the shitter. Right. <laughs> and Gustafson's career, he he fought Rumble sometime after that, and that didn't go well. Wow. But yeah, end of the day, Kamaru. I don't see him finishing Jorge. I think Jorge has enough fucking balls to last. Yeah, but but I think it's just, what man, what Kamaru does, though, when he gets people down, and he fucking does it just... He he just makes it look like it's nothing but a thing, and gets him down, and then he will sap your energy and bust you up, and you spend every bit of your reserves just trying to get fucked back up. And against yeah. a, a world class wrestler, and Kamara's tank ain't going nowhere. That's it. It's going nowhere. He's dude. got an amazing tank, and he will burn all of yours. And that's why he wins all the fights that he does. Say all you want, Masvidal looked a little exhausted in that BMF fight with Diaz. Yeah, well. I don't blame him for being exhausted in that first title fight because that's six days. I get that. I will say this. I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say if Masvidal is not able to get the job done in the first round, that fight is over. Really? Yeah. All right. Because Kamara was going to just take it over from there. And, he, and it sounds like neither man's going to be nice. They I, both promise a barn burner. I, I legitimately think the only people who have had any success against Kamaru Usman, which has been, I'm just really just picking some grapes right here and trying to find a thing that I might be able to support my argument here. But uh, remember the Covington fight. Colby fucking laid into him pretty good in that first round. Yeah. Kind of knocked him a little wobbly sure. a couple of times. Caught him. Um, but... But he wasn't able to finish him off, and yeah. that's when Kamaro comes out and does what he does. <clears throat> and Colby's striking is good because people are more worried about his wrestling. Right. So and you can have good striking like Ben Askren. No one gave a fuck about his striking. They care no. about that wrestling. Yeah. Unless you're a boxer. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I've, I've got Kamaro. Probably not a finish, but he's uh, just by domination. Yeah. Domination can sometimes be worse than a finish. Yeah. Because if those scorecards get announced and it's anything lower than a 45 – you you are looked upon badly. Ready for the picks, sir? Ready to get it done. All right, let's get to the picks then. Uh, I guess we'll start with what you're drinking. I'm. I think I'm gonna be keeping on the uh, the long ship. No, I'm drinking the old mead tonight. Yeah, it's I'm, nice. Uh, it's I'm been on a while. water because you know I'm in training. Puss, Cutting weight, you know. Plus, uh, let's see what you're listening to this time around. Uh, I'm gonna go classic Josh Homme. Go Kius. Yeah. Listen to some of that a little earlier. That's uh, that's, that's got all right. the got the blood the blood pumping. Right. Um, I'm going to keep it kind of easy. Uh, Stephen Carpenter from Deftones put out basically his uh, uh, like uh, his playthrough of um, uh, which one was that one? Uh, 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 the ceremony. One they, ceremony. Yeah, the one they just put out a video yeah. for him. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was just dropped. Uh, I think a couple of days ago. So uh, I mean, I'm still I'm still big on the Deftones thing, and we got them coming up September 11th. So celebrating freedom. Yeah. Um, all right, fights go. What's the one thing's going to happen tomorrow that nobody else knows about that you do? Oh God, I think there's a better chance of Masvidal dropping Usman with a flash knockout than there is of Andrade doing it to Shevchenko. Yeah, because that middle fight, the 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 Zhang, the Zhang Wei Li Namunas fight, that's so close. I think in my mind, those other two, there's one extreme or there's the other extreme. Yeah, well, what I'm hoping I see, and this this is a pick in in terms of what I hope I see, because I still think that Wei Li Zhang Zhang Wei Li, whatever you want to call her, I I, I still think she's going to get the win. Uh, I would love to see Rose Namunas with a rear naked choke second round. Yeah. Do you think uh, she would tap, or would she go out? I think she goes out. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's yeah, uh, because I feel like it's going to happen quick. That chick is a warrior. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then uh, I'm going to feel real good when I hear my first whistles of the night in the crowd. Like, yeah. oh, I didn't miss that shit. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, hey, we did it. Yeah, we'll be uh, yeah th- with no thanks from the laptop or Microsoft. Um, We'll be back at it again in two weeks. That's we're, right. Uh, we're going to be at your mama's house next week, <laughs> boys. <laughs> Take uh, next week off, and then we'll be back the uh, the week right after that. So it'll be uh, May yeah, it was 7th, I want to say, something like that, 6th or 7th. So that's going to do it for us this time around. 
Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy UFC 261, and we'll be uh, right back. At, next time I talk to you, I'll be drunk. I promise. I hope so.